Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaza. And I'm Woody Mike. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. Shiny new box, Mike. Sealed. It is sealed. I mean, that's how they come, I think. Yeah. So we made a trip up to Battlefront. Yeah. And we blagged the free copy of this from them. And they gave us a demo game as well. They did, yeah. Which was nice, which was nice. Uh, was, it, was it Craig? Chris. It Chris. Chris. Apologies, Chris. Sorry, no. Chris was Star Wars. It was um, Anders. Star Trek. Star Trek. Anders, who Anders. is our trade rep, by the way. If you're interested in purchasing Battlefront and Flames of War product yeah. and modeling for Vantage Store, we get it from Anders. So, another glorious day in the car. It is. Aliens. Yes. Cooperative survival game. Co-op game. I, there's no reason you couldn't play this game solo. There is That's nothing right. about the co-op mechanics from what we saw that required it to be other than solo. The aliens move based on a very simple attack the nearest. Yes. And spawn at random points. But anyway, we're talking, we're not even opening the box. We're going to show you the components. We're going to show you a little bit of sort of sped up footage of the game we played over at Battlefront HQ and then talk about the gameplay. So it's got some nice components. Rule book. Rule book. It's got all the rules in it. And it's also, oh yeah, it smells really toxic. Photographic paper, love it. Usual, these are the things that come in this box, etc. One thing I like, mission cards. Yeah. The individual cards, um, both sides have that, the, that mission. So you're not going yeah. to find it in the book or anything. No. It's there in front of you. Yeah. Modular board system. Which we'll get, which we'll get to, right? We get that destructions. Yeah, they're not pre-assembled miniatures, and they're not push fit, ish. Yeah. So we get Corporal Dwayne Hicks, Ellen Ripley, Lieutenant, oh, he's a lieutenant in the name. So Lieutenant Scott Gorman. Oh yeah, he's American. Yeah, lieutenant. New Private William Hudson. Mm. Expletives deleted. Private Janet Vasquez. That's the one with the big gun. And Private Rico Frosty Frost. Very nice. The set that we played with, they'd taken to a convention to play, and somebody had nicked the new miniature. Yeah. Uh, so we had to use a token for that. Um, and then you get a load of Xenomorphs. Yeah. Along, along with instructions on how to build them. Yeah, so 16 of these. And already had a look at it. There's multiple ways of putting these together. So they're. Yeah, yeah I think there's more than one version yeah. of it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so. Game board, nice, thick, two mil grey board. Yep. Very nice. Different way, you can tessellate it different ways. It's got the doors drawn on. This um, game board's always a problem for us in terms of showing you a game on camera, is they really catch glare. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. we, we do like the idea of playing a game, but we might try spraying it with matte varnish. Hopefully it doesn't melt it all, and it does take the glare yeah. off. So. Thick white lines don't out the wall, so we've got the usual lot. It's a square system, usual mm. line of sight rules. Yep. We have doorways during the game. You can barricade those. You can. And as a gameplay tip, we learn barricade doors that you don't need to. Yeah. And we'll come to that later why. And check the rooms so, so that there, there are no other exits from that barricaded room. Yeah, all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So there's four of them boards, Mike. Got four of them. Let's go. And there's tokens, tokens. and stuff. Move on. Tokens. They've seen tokens before. It has tokens and they're quite nice. It uses a dial system. Spinny dials. For the turns and also for aim, which is very, very important. With shooting, you uh, you don't... Yeah. Yeah. So. Cats individual cards. card for each character. The six main characters. And there's, there's two sides to them. One is where they're healthy and one of them is where they're not so healthy. Cool. We and didn't get to see that come into play. Yeah. Healthy and not healthy. And there's a nuke card. So mission one is rescue nuke. Rescue nuke. That's the one we played. We did rescue nuke, but not everybody came out of the mission. Yeah. So single sprue. Green for marines. Yeah. Main body's pretty solid with just glue on some arms. Most of it yeah. looks like one arm each. And, and they look like they're even keyed in the, in the torso somewhere. In they most do. cases, yeah. Textured bases with their names on them. The names, yes. The names being written on them for people who don't know which miniature is which is good. And the Three. aliens, there's four sprues of this. 
Nice. For a total of 16. Well, at first look, it looks com complex and random. Uh, because it's squiggly bits and yeah, them well, off. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's plug the tail in and glue the arms on. Yeah. Is what it actually is. You mentioned the texture base. It's got that kind of griddle flooring. So this is very much based upon, this is the Aliens movie. It's yeah. those characters, it's that setting. Yeah. It's that, and the mission, so far as, and we haven't seen them all, so far as they look, it's that story. It, it's the Hadley's Hope uh, Habitation Centre, but it does move into the uh, other areas. D6 and D10s. Yes. Low is good. So that they, they've got a star instead of a one. They've got the number 10 on. Yeah, that is worth knowing the star is the one, not the 10. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're rolling under skill levels. So we get a set of action cards, which uh, tell you the marine phase and then the alien phase. Order of operations. So each character takes a turn to do two actions. And then we there's a blip card. Which are these things, which tells the the game... Let's get this open. ...where the aliens are going to... There's four spawn points that no. we know of. In, in the mission we played. Yeah. You know, this is that, that's all very heavily caveated. Yeah, so there was four spawn points, and we had to get to this corridor, get to uh, Newt, persuade Newt to come with us. Uh, yeah. And if you don't use Ellen Ripley... You've got to chase her down before she can persuade her. Basically, you're not going to do it if you don't yeah. have Ripley, because it, as soon as she, a Marine finishes its turn, she runs away from him. Yeah. Right. The blip tokens are, are, are part of the kind of really interesting mechanisms of the game, um, because you don't just put three blips down a turn or whatever. You draw N cards, depending on the mission a turn, and it will then tell you how many blips you put at, at which locations. But there's invariably a secondary effect as well. So this one's called Alien Drones. You put one blip on three, but players must either discard one barricade in play or place a second blip at spawn point one. Not where these ones are spawning, at a different spawn point. If there are no barricades and the players must place the extra blip. That is a fairly common statement on these cards, which is why it's worth barricading up places that don't need barricading up. So you've got them to burn when these things happen. But these have other secondary effects as well as that. Um, and, they, and they really build pressure on the game. The number... You're not going to be able to kill all the aliens. The game is designed for you not to be able to do that. You're going to kill some aliens, but you're going to complete the mission and get out. So with, with the blips, so they're basic white dots on one side and numbers from one up to five. There is only, I think there's only one five and we had that in the game. But disappointingly, there's no zeros. No. So your random blip goes on to the uh, spawn point if it's in line of sight of one of us. Or one of the troops, it becomes immediately visible. And the way this system works, instead of putting four aliens, you on stack them. They come with a token, so you have an you alien stack. figure. Yeah. And then there's tokens underneath it, up to how many's on on that square. And then you take a token away for each kill, and then you're left with the alien which you kill. The Marines can shoot the aliens quite effectively. So uh, we, we get the, we've got the other deck out now. This is this is effectively the play deck. And there's a little widget. This deck will be cycled through multiple times um, because players will be called upon to draw from it, but they will usually be called upon to spend from it. So not only are these your cards in hand, so if you've drawn this card, you uh, you have a hazard, you are losing hope, all right? Game over, man. Place this on your hero character. Each time your character ac activates, reveal a card, and then they get some kind of malice, some kind of negative effect. So you, that means you're burning an extra card before you even find out what bad it is for you. Because these cards, they start being in, is it? Endurance. endurance and that's kind of in the positive side of the pile. And when you use them, they get moved into the... So here's my endurance pile here. And then they get used up and they're in the exhaust pile. And then there's the discard pile. So as long as you can draw from here, 
This is when you, they use, they'll go into this pile and could conceivably be cycled back in. When there is nothing left in this pile on the left, and you are using these cards, they're going into discard and they're out of the game forever. All of the Marines shoot with fully automatic weapons, and it costs them cards to keep shooting. <laughs> So bearing in mind, a single blip could have a stack of five Xenomorphs on it. Best case scenario, I needed five shots to kill it, to kill that stack. And there could be two such stacks in the turn. There could be more such stacks in the turn. Vasquez, she gets the uh, auto cannon. One shot is three cards are, are, are um, she can burn through this deck in two turns. Um, with the shooting, each, each person's got an aim skill. So Vasquez starts at an aim skill of eight. Did so her, shot? her first shot is eight or less on a D10. Yep. But and she burns three, of three these cards. cards. She takes the second shot. Burning three more well, cards. This is now at seven and she has a dial, goes down to seven. She's hit again, goes down to six. She misses on five, but she still burns three cards. And has another action. Yeah. And then, say so maybe she's moved and then she's fired. Yeah. In the alien's turn, when an alien starts moving towards her, she can then use defensive fire. But her aim hasn't reset. Yeah, the aim score resets at the beginning of the turn. Yeah. So it's an interesting mechanic. Um, so we played that. The other Marines fire full auto. The, oh, the bit thing we've missed out there is why she's spending three points of three cards and they're spending one. Is she rolls two dice and chooses the lowest. She choose. She rolls two dice when she shoots, as opposed to one. Ripley is the in what we played at a single shot pistol, so she couldn't keep burning cards to shoot. Um, so in killing the xenomorphs, the marines were exhausting their ability. Yes. You know, because the the deck as a re as a resource, a finite resource, was interesting, and we kind of quickly realised that we've got to keep moving. Yes, we've got to keep moving. You only move in a finite number of squares. It doesn't have fixed term limits or anything, because this is this is your limitation. But as soon as the xenomorph started appearing in quantity, Vasquez was tearing her way through the deck. Yes. And we, we, we were in very, very grave danger of running out of cards and not being able to shoot anymore because the cards are, are ammo, there are a whole bunch of resources. So because there were, there were four characters in play, mm. then we were only drawing three blip cards. If we had five people, then they would be drawing four blip cards. But, but again, you... this is mission specific. Yeah. We, don't, we, we don't know that that's universally the case. But that was the case in the mission we played. I believe it was, the, and it's, if we have only got two characters in the game or one person playing, I think the number of cards goes down to make it easier for less characters. Yeah. That's the impression I got. But as I say, in our game, there were four characters in the game and three of us playing them. And we were burning through the cards very quickly once the fighting started. And Ripley did get to good news. But then got jumped by the aliens, and the last we saw, she was laid on the floor as everybody exited the area. Yeah, she was knocked to the ground and being carried off by a xenomorph. Uh, but Newt got out, and yeah. um, the, the corporal, obviously. So, yeah. as a game, it felt like uh, uh, Space Hulk Plus. You know, so you had the blips, there they are, xenomorphs. The, the Marines felt like they could kill the Xenomorphs, which was good. It wasn't being able to shoot them all that they were worried about. It was about running out of fighting power that they were yep. running about. You know, husbanding that resource. I mean, if you played that again, we'd probably be a lot more cautious about letting Vasquez shoot. Yes. Because she's a good, she's a killer, but she also burns through the resources. Which was interesting. Um, yeah, and each character's got a series of special things. So these cards are doing a lot of different things for you. They're pieces of equipment like flashlights and so forth. They let you do special rules. You can rest and put move some cards back into the endurance deck, can't you? But as, as a game experience, the mission we played, the rescuing Newton and getting out, 
we got out two of the four people that went in and knew <laughs> and we felt and we felt like we'd won the mission. That was the minimum requirement yep. sort of victory condition. There is a kind of linked mission campaign system. So for example, if you've lost guys from the team, you can go on the rescue mission and try and get them back. What one thing that would concerned us we never saw is there are actually face hugger tokens. <laughs> yeah, we never got a face hugger. <laughs> but yeah, a face hugger. they're in there. They're in there. Um there was there was also things like in the mission there was a computer terminal. Yeah. So there are new is somewhere in, within the complex, but if you go and to a, off in the other direction and use this computer, it then tells you where the right blip is. And I think then, it let you look at one. But anyway, yeah. that again, that's mission specific, I think. Yeah. You know, in the mission, it tells you what those do. So, four boards, double sided. There's, I, I, I think there was about eight or ten missions in there. Okay, I can't. Really. Yeah, yeah, something of that order. As again, what did you think? It was, it was, it was hard. It was hard. Because we're not. Not at first. Yeah. But cooperating and trying to say, right, well, if I stay there, I can do all of this. No, no, move around there. And then you try, you, you've try. you got to work together and you've got to use the skills of each person. Like you, like we say, we, we, we are, well, as soon as the first... Although Hicks, Hicks was the sort of like, he was going for MVP, wasn't he? I think he killed six in a row before anybody else saw one. That was just the way that the game, yeah. the game played out. Because he was guarding the rear, wasn't he? Yeah. And and so the the, the using the skills, using the cards. Uh, Hicks again, he picked up the flamethrower just as he was leaving. Yeah, I was looking forward <laughs> to using that. And um, Hudson, uh, Anders was playing Hudson, and he picked up nearly every negative card. Oh, that guy, yeah. <laughs> he was losing the plot from turn one. He had, you know, it's not on his character sheet. He just drew a card that said, like, I'm losing my marbles or something. Yeah. Yeah. And and he, he he was just yeah, yeah. Had all kinds of problems yeah you only get one action and anything you do burns this card um, yeah those kind of things so um, it had that it, it had a real sense of jeopardy had a real sense you had a few calm turns because the monsters didn't start appearing the, a couple were on the board you know probably weren't going to be a problem so you know we find we find new we shoot a few xenomorphs it seems fine. And then we enter into the, you know, the daddy phase of the game. They're coming out of the goddamn walls. And they're coming out of the goddamn walls, mate. Game over, man. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. Definitely will play a couple more times. Um, there needs to be some kind of deep hidden flaw for me not to enjoy it. Yeah. So as a, as a game, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Like yeah. I say, there's face huggers, there's sentry guns. Yeah, there's, there's, there's more to come. There are expansions to this game as well. But this yeah. is just the basic set that we yeah. have a look at. Um. Nice 45 minute. minutes nice miniatures the game that we played with 45 minutes we did have someone who knew what they were doing showing us yes and that definitely makes it and has been taking this round shows you know yeah. so uh, if you've met a Norse man at a show showing off this game <laughs> from from Battlefront that's Anders. Except He's Newt didn't doing... get recovered in the last game. Yeah, yeah, Newt didn't get recovered from the show. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm definitely looking forward to playing some more games of this. I would recommend this product based upon what I have seen. Yeah. I would give it a healthy 8 out of 10. Yeah. And we've opened this one and I'm taking one home. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, guys. Hope that review was useful for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content. Like the video. Maybe leave us a comment. Thank you.